Plant parts and their functions. Let us now study the characteristics of roots, leaves, stems, and flowers of plants. Roots. The roots hold the plant to the ground. They absorb water and minerals from the soil and bring them up to the stem and leaves. Roots have three main parts, primary root, secondary roots, and root hairs. The first root to develop from the seed is the primary root. The primary root is the largest root to form in a plant. It usually grows straight down into the soil. Later, secondary roots form. Secondary roots are small roots that branch out from the primary root. The root hairs grow from the secondary roots. They are very fine roots. They look like short pieces of string attached to the secondary roots. Some roots grow in unusual places above the ground. They are called adventitious roots. These roots provide additional support for some trees and plants with tall, thin, and soft stems. Types of Root Systems There are two types of root systems, the top root system and the fibrous root system. Some plants have a large and well-developed primary root that grows deep into the soil. This is called the top root system. In some plants like carrots and radish, the top root becomes thick and fleshy due to some stored materials. In other plants, the primary root stops from growing. Instead, many secondary roots that are almost equal in size grow from it. This well-developed secondary root system is called the fibrous root system. Corn, rice, Grass and oat have a fibrous root system. Some plants have specialized roots. Observe the roots of a sugarcane plant. It has roots that grow from the lower part of the stem above the ground. These roots are called prop roots. They help support the plant so it can stand erect even when the wind blows hard. Prop roots are examples of adventitious roots. Observe the roots of orchids. These plants have roots that cling to the branches of trees. These roots are called aerial roots. Aerial roots get water from the air. Stems. The stem is the part of the plant where leaves, flowers, and fruits are attached. In most plants, the main stem forms many branches. These branches are also part of the stem. Stems may be green or brown in color. The stem connects the roots to the other parts of the plant. It grows upward toward the sunlight. It also carries water from the roots up to the leaves. It supports the whole plant. It must be tough to withstand the force of strong winds. There are two kinds of stems, woody stems and herbaceous stems. Woody stems are non-green stems that are thick and hard. They are covered with bark. The bark is the rough, outer covering of a woody stem. Trees, shrubs, and some vines have woody stems. They continue to produce wood and bark as they grow. Here are some plants with woody stems. 1. Trees are tall plants with one big stem called a trunk. They have hard, woody, and branching stems. Examples of trees are mango, jackfruit, tamarind, and acacia. 2. Shrubs are woody plants with short and hard stems branching near the ground. Examples of shrubs are santan, rose, and gumamela. 3. Some vines have hard stems, but all vines cannot stand. 
They creep and cling on any solid objects or other plants for support. An example of a vine with a hard stem is the batao. Herbaceous stems are soft and green stems. Plants with herbaceous stems usually do not grow as tall as plants with woody stems. Plants with herbaceous stems are called herbs. Examples of these herbs are cabbage, lettuce, pechai, and ferns. Herbaceous stems are not as strong as woody stems. Leaves the leaves of plants are usually green in color. This is because leaves have chlorophyll. The green coloring pigment that captures light energy from the sun. This energy is used in photosynthesis. The food which plants need in order to live and grow is manufactured in the leaves. Photosynthesis is the process in which plants absorb light energy from the sun and convert it into chemical energy stored as food. In photosynthesis, energy from the sun is used to combine water and carbon dioxide to make food. Water is absorbed by the roots and brought by the stem up to the leaves. Carbon dioxide enters the leaves through tiny openings called stomata. The food formed during photosynthesis is composed of starch. Without food, plants cannot live. Let us examine the parts of a leaf. The parts of a leaf are the blade, vein, midrib, and petiole. The expanded portion of the leaf is called the leaf blade. The leaf blade helps in absorbing energy from the sun. At the middle part of the leaf blade is a midrib with its branches called veins. The petiole is the leaf stalk that connects the leaf to the stem. Some plants have stipules. They look like two small leaflets at the base of the stalk. Kinds of leaves Leaves may be simple or compound. A simple leaf has only one leaf blade attached to a petiole. Examples of this kind of leaf are the guava and San Francisco leaves. A compound leaf consists of many leaf blades attached to one petiole. Examples of this kind of leaf are the acacia and malungay leaves. Characteristics of leaves. The leaves of plants differ in many characteristics. Leaves differ in the shape of their margins or edges. Leaves with margins or edges that look like a saw are called toothed. Leaves having smooth edges are called entire. Leaves with irregular edges are called lobed. Leaves differ in the kind of venation they have. Venation is the arrangement of veins in the leaf. Veins are small tubes that carry food and water in a leaf. Look closely at the veins of the leaves. These are two kinds of venation, parallel and netted. If a pair of leaves arises from a single node, the leaf arrangement is called opposite. The santan plant has an opposite arrangement of leaves. If there is one leaf attached at each node on each side of the stem, the leaf arrangement is called alternate. Gumamelas have an alternate arrangement of leaves. If three or more leaves arise from the single node of the stem, the leaf arrangement is called world. Aloe veras have a world arrangement of leaves. Leaves of plants have different shapes. Broad leaves, needle leaves, and narrow leaves. 1. Broad leaves. These are wide and flat leaves often with a visible network of veins. Examples of plants with broad leaves are mahogany, 
bird of paradise, and banana. Some gardeners use these types of plants for ornamental purposes. 2. Narrow leaves. These leaves are long and slender and without a wide blade. Examples of plants with narrow leaves are grasses, corn, wheat, onions, fortune plants, and bamboo. 3. Needle leaves. These leaves are similar to sewing needles. They are thin, pointed, and ranging from 1 inch long to 5 inches long. They are well adapted for growth in a dry environment. Examples are pines and spruces. Flowers Not all plants bear flowers. Plants that bear flowers are called flowering plants. Many flowers are brightly colored and fragrant to attract insects, which help in the process of pollination. Characteristics of flowers Flowers differ in their size, texture, color, and fragrance. Flowers have different sizes. They may be small, medium-sized, or big. Which flower you know is big? Which is small? Flowers have different colors. They may be red, orange, yellow, pink, violet, or white. Flowers have different scents or smells. Some flowers may be fragrant like the Sampaguita and Camia. Some flowers have no smell like the Bird of Paradise. Other flowers have a bad smell. A flower smell or fragrance comes from its petals. Fragrant flowers differ in the texture of their petals. Some petals are soft and smooth to touch while others are hard and rough. Flowers with brightly colored petals are usually pollinated by insects like bees and butterflies. Those that have a foul smell are pollinated by houseflies. Flowers that are not brightly colored and do not have fragrance are usually pollinated by wind and water. Parts of flowers Flowers are made up of the following parts. Petals, sepals, pistil, stamen, receptacle, and flower stalk. The petals are the colorful parts of a flower. The sepals are smaller than the petals and are green in color. The petals and sepals are held together by the receptacle. The male and female organs of the flower are found in the middle of the petals. The pistil is a female organ of the flower, while the stamen is a male organ. Flowers that have both stamens and pistils are called perfect flowers. The morning glory and gumamela are examples of perfect flowers. If a flower lacks either the stamen or pistil, it is an imperfect flower. The flowers of the papaya plant are imperfect. Fruits. Flowering plants produce seeds. They store food in their seeds. This stored food nourishes the plant embryo inside the seed. The part of the plant that contains the seeds is called the fruit. It is the ripened ovary of a flower. Fruits are either fleshy or dry. They also vary in size, shape, and color. Oranges, Mangoes, chicos, and pomelos are some examples of fruits. Seeds Seeds are very important. The life of a new plant begins with a seed. Some seeds are small, while others are big. A seed has a baby plant inside. Wrapped around the baby plant are the cotyledons. The cotyledons store food. The baby plant uses the food in the cotyledons until it grows up from the seed and is ready to make its own food. The baby plant uses the food in the cotyledon until it grows up from the seed and is ready to make its own food. The baby plant consists of two parts, the leaf bud and the root bud. As the seed gets water, the baby plant breaks the seed cover and sprouts. 
The root bud grows downward and the leaf bud grows and pushes upward to form a stem. Leaves grow and develop from the stem. Flowering plants are classified according to the number of their seed leaves or cotyledons. Plants that produce seed with one seed leaf are called monocotyledons or monocots. Corn and rice are monocots. Plants that produce seed containing two seed leaves are called dicotyledons or dicots. Nuts and beans are dicots.